The second round of the Blancpain GT Sprint Series sees the teams and drivers head to the Brands Hatch Circuit in the United Kingdom. It's the first time in 18 years that international sports car racing has been at the Kent venue, and with 20 cars on the grid, it's going to be spectacular. But before we get that underway, let's look back at the first round of the season at Nagaro. Polman says Aramis was forced into the pit lane at the end of the formation lap after contact with Nicky Mayer Malnoff. That led the gap open for Sergio Jimenez to move into the lead of the race in the Team Brazil BMW. Up into second place in the early stages was the 84 HDP Mercedes of Maxi Buch, and he soon then went around the outside of Jimenez to take the lead of the race down at the hairpin. An impressive maneuver from the German, and from then on, the Mercedes would stretch his advantage up at the front. Gregory Gilbert was the next man to force his way past the Brazilian and move up into second place as the BMW Team Brazil squad started to slide down the order. After the formation lap contact, Nicky Mermanoff lost his bonnet and that forced him and Marcus Vingelhock out of the race. Into the pits came the lead Mercedes, Max Buch handing over to his teammate Max Goetz and they emerged comfortably in the lead of the race. Second place man Gilbert came in to hand over to his teammate and reigning champion Stefan Ortelli but as they exited the pits, they weren't close enough to the Mercedes to move into the lead. But Ortelli was on a mission and immediately started to close down on the race leader. After early problems, Alex Zanardi was on a fight back drive, forcing his way past Sasha Halleck to move further up the order. He would eventually finish in 13th place. The BMW Team Brazil car was now in the hands of Kaka Bueno, and right at the end of the race, he lost out on the third position. Sergio Jimenez was frustrated as Vincent Abril forced his way past. Also going around the outside was Steph Dusseldorp in the second HDP Mercedes. Bueno tried to resist, but couldn't do anything about it. The gap was only 1.7 seconds as they crossed the line, but Max Goetz and Max Buch won the opening race of the season in Nagaro, just ahead of Gilbert and Ortelli, and as a result, head to Brands Hatch, leading the championship. WRT didn't enjoy the perfect start to their title defence in Nagaro. A circuit that really suited the Audis left them surprised seeing the Mercedes take victory. And the number one car of Cesar Ramos and Lawrence Van Thor, after starting the main race on pole position, had to retire before the race even began. Enzo Eid and Rene Rast could only manage seventh place in the main race, but Rast is confident that this circuit will see them back on the top step of the podium. I think podium is realistic. I mean, we have a good crew uh, in terms of pit stops. They do a very good job uh, in the pit stops. And I think it's very difficult to overtake you. So the qualify will be crucial. And I think for one lap we are at the pace. So let's hope for a good qualify and fast pit stop. And then we can win or reach the podium. Phoenix Audi had a challenging time in Nagaro. Marcus Vingelhock and Nicky Mayer Melnoff had a decent grid position for the main race. But contact with the pole man on the formation lap put them out in the early stages. One of the Britons in the field this weekend is Alessandro Latif. He's alongside Marc Basseng in the Pro-Am category. Basseng is looking forward to getting his teeth into the Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit. It's a quite quick track which actually suits the Audi. We need to use the arrow which the car has, but it's quite bumpy as well, so we need to see which influence that had to the car performance. Alessandro is a quite young guy, but really talented, uh, and I'm clearly have more experience and I try to teach him and guide him over the weekends and even in Nogaro he did already a really good job. BMW Team Brazil had one of their strongest showings at Nogaro, running in the podium places until the closing laps of the race. This weekend Nelson Piquet Jr. is on racing duty elsewhere but he will be replaced by Vardeno Brito, two times Brazilian GT champion and the man currently leading the V8 Brazilian stock car series. He's looking forward to getting to grips with Franz Hatch. It's a legendary uh, track. And I, I saw some Eiffel Senna race in Formula One, but I just drove in uh, simulators. It's a really beautiful track. I'm really excited to be here. It's like a high-speed corners race, and I like too much high-speed corners, so I think we can do a good, a good job. <laughs> Max Buch and Max Goetz lead the championship for HTP Motorsport Mercedes after the opening round in France. But both have admitted they were slightly lucky to come away victorious. Neither were expecting to do so well in Nagaro. This weekend in Brands Hatch, though, it's a different story. And Max Goetz is confident he and Buch can get to grips with the car and can be running at the front right from the outset on a circuit that neither of them have raced on before. 
the layout looks like Sanford and, and we know from the past that Sanford is a nice track for us, for our car. The car likes a, a lot of fast corners and, 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 and downforce corners, so I think it's, it's good for us here. Thomas Enger raced at the opening round in France, but for the Grasser Racing Team. Here he's back with Reiter Engineering, and alongside him will be Stefan Racina, the Czech driver and the Slovakian driver, together in one car. Racina initially announced his retirement from motorsport towards the end of last season, but seems to have been tempted back into racing by the Reiter squad, and these two will no doubt be a force to be reckoned with, having topped the opening free practice session. I think uh, every track can shoot Lamborghini if we get it right uh, in free practice and then for qualifying. I think qualifying will be very, uh, very important here as uh, overtaking uh, possibilities will be very small. We need to be as much front as possible uh, in qualifying, have a clean race, do great pit stops and then we can even think of uh, achieving you know, podium results. Alex Zanardi is out once again in his Broal BMW Z4, returning to the circuit that he won two Paralympic gold medals at at London 2012. This has been such a special place for me. Uh, I can remember back in 91 when I first came and I won the pole position in a Formula 3000 car, sharing the front row with uh, Damon Hill. I finished on the podium in WTCC in 2009. Then I lived some very special days in 2012. It's funny because uh, with a race car, I never really realized that uh, this place is so hilly. We were going uh, in the opposite direction in our Olympic uh, cycling course. And coming up Paddock Hill was incredibly hard. With a race car, you know, it's kind of easy. To have more than 500 horsepower under your trunk definitely helps. All the turns are very tricky, very difficult, especially this one, paddock hill, which is blind. When you sit in your race car, you don't really see where you should put your wheels, and uh, when you see the curb, it's actually too late. It's pretty understandable that this place means a lot to me, and uh, I got a great car underneath me, and uh, I'm gonna drive it to the best of my ability. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Brands Hatch for the qualifying race ahead of the second round of the 2014 Blancpain GT Sprint Series. My name's Jack Nichols. I'm up here in the commentary box with a beautiful view on a beautiful day over the Kent countryside. And alongside me here is John Watson. John, a beautiful circuit, 22 degrees, and it's only coming up to 25 past 10 in the morning. This is going to be a scorcher of a day, hopefully on the track as well. Well, it's as warm now at a quarter past 20 past 10 as it was later in Saturday afternoon when we had qualifying for this qualifying race. And uh, there we see the front row of the grid, the Audi on pull position alongside the Mercedes-Benz, separated by 22 hundredths of a second and a stunning time of 123.865. Really, really, I think, a joy to be here at Brands Hatch on a weekend that is just so lovely. There we can see Marcus Wingelhock briefly, just starting there in second place. The grandstands are filling up very nicely as well. We've got a second race coming up later today, which will be the main race. And so uh, I expect an even bigger crowd for that once everyone's had their Sunday morning line and then made their way down here. There's your own Bleekermolen then. He will be starting third on the grid in the Lamborghini. He started in pole position uh, in Nagaro for the opening round of the season. And as we make our way now down the grid, you'll see on the left there, Lawrence Van Thor, on the right, Max Goats, they are the front row men. And then the first of the BMWs, Alex Zanardi, starting in sixth position, just behind the BMW of Valdeno Brito for BMW Team Brazil and Zanardi a real legend at this circuit and in motorsport in general, but with two Paralympic gold medals and a silver medal, I think, to his name here, it's really going to be a superb return for him. If he can fin even finish in sixth place, I think would be an impressive performance. Of course, the one thing that Alex Zanardi has that is different to everybody else is he will drive this entire one-hour race on his own. Brands Hatch has always been a physical racetrack, and on a day like today where it is warm, uh, that's only just going to add to that physical stress that Alex Zanardi is going to have to deal with. So um, a tough day's work in store for the Italian driver. The cars roar off the line then as they make their way around on the green flag lap. There you can see the Lamborghini of Thomas Enger at the back of the grid. He will start when, unfortunately, he uh, missed out on the qualifying session. Problems with the rear left of that Lamborghini meant they will start down at the back of the grid, but they have got 
uh, a very quick car. They topped the times in free practice one. And so as a result, expect them to be in contention as the cars make their way around Druids and down towards the left-hander of Graham Hill Bend. One of the things I think is going to be interesting in this sprint or this qualifying race is the fact that not many drivers in the field have actually competed in a race at Brands Hatch. They've all been out on the grid. We've seen, I've got to see the grid now. Lawrence Vanthill will start on pole position then alongside Maximilian Goetz. The second row will see Jerome Bleekermolen and Marcus Vingelhock start side by side in the Lamborghini and the Audi. Then it's the row of BMWs. Brito Filo uh, making his debut this weekend. Alongside him is Alex Zanardi. Then the second BMW started by Caca Bueno in seventh place. Rene Rast disappointed to be down in eighth place. Couldn't tie it all together on his quick lap. Then the Ferrari of Andrea Montemini alongside David Fuminelli completing the top ten in the second row. Our BMW Stefano Telli couldn't make it through to the top 10 shootout. Frustration for him. He'll start alongside Mark Vasseng. Then Mateusz Lizowski in 13th place, ahead of Sergei Afanasiev in the second HTP Motorsport car. Sasha Halleck will start in 15th place alongside the first of the McLarens, started by Sten Pentas, the Estonian, just ahead of Fabio Anidi in the second McLaren. Miguel Torrell for Fortec down in 18th place. And then in 19th position will be Thomas Eng after not getting out in the qualifying run. We were due to have 20 cars this weekend, but unfortunately the Porsche of uh, Nick Tandy and Philip Frommenweiler was forced to retire after an accident yesterday in uh, free practice one. Yeah, disappointing, no Porsche in the race. But just going back to what I was mentioning about, very few drivers have competed in an actual race at Brands Hatch. So when the lights go out, it's gonna be a whole new game for I would say over three quarters of the field. So they've done their laps in practice, they've done their laps in qualifying, they're under the circuit, pretty much from a single car perspective. What they don't know is with 20 cars all around them, what is it going to happen? Here we go then, the start of the qualifying race about to get underway. When the red lights go out, we will be racing here at Brands Hatch. The red lights come on. And away we go then, and it's a great start from Max Goetz in the Mercedes. He looks to the outside as they come towards Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. He can't quite make it through. Van Thor holds the inside line. We're on board with Kaka Bueno as it all gets very busy in the middle of the pack. But, but Lawrence Van Thor ran wide on the edge, and that allowed the rest of the field to try and get up the inside into Drew's favourite overtaking spot at Brands Hatch. But he's still got the ID leading down into Graham Hill Bend. And it's your own Bleekermolen who's made his way up into second position then. So Bleekermolen into second. I mean, in third place, he's gone Vingelhock. Max Goetz, from looking like he had the lead, has now gone all the way down to fourth place. And that's an unfortunate spin for Sten Pentas as they come out now onto the Grand Prix loop. A number of these drivers have raced the Indy circuit, but this is where the racetrack gets proper. And there you can see the uh, McLaren getting back on its way. But it's Lawrence Van Thor who leads then as they come towards Hawthorne Bend for the first time. And the problem for uh, the Mercedes-Benz of Max Goetz is that as Van Thor ran wide on early on the exit of Pentacle Bend, it compromised the exit of the Mercedes. That opened up the gap up the inside into Druids. That's why the Mercedes went from potentially leading down to fourth place as it is now on the opening lap. Through Sheen Curve and now under braking for the tight left-hander that's so heavily cambered at Sterling. A wonderful place to watch from as we go on board with Caca Bueno. He's about to emerge back into the sight of all the fans here at Brands Hatch and onto the Indy circuit section of the circuit but it's Lawrence Van Thor who is going to lead the way as they cross the line at the end of lap one a one hour race pit stop windows between 25 and 35 minutes where they'll change drivers all apart from Alex Zanardi and as they fly into Paddock Hill Bend Van Thor, Bleekermolen, Finkelhock, Coates, uh, Britton, Bueno, Rast, Montemini, Zanardi and Basseng the top ten and unfortunately we've got the HTP car into the pit so Sergei Afanasiev obviously coming a cropper on that opening lap but look at that, Lawrence Van Thor running way, way wide on the Graham Hill Bend. We've seen cars actually getting all four wheels off the racetrack, off the Rimble strip, onto that green concrete curbing. And uh, there will be a penalty if you do that consistently. If you do it over three times, you will then get a time penalty. And if you do it four times, then you'll probably find yourself getting a 30 second, maybe an exclusion. Here's a battle between the Lamborghini and the BMW. BMW looking to the outside as Rene Rast tries to fight and get his way past Caca Bueno up into sixth place. It's Bueno in that yellow BMW Brazil car. The number two car there is Rene Rast, and right behind him is Andrea Montemini. So a hard-fought battle for sixth, seventh, and eighth places. And then uh, behind them in ninth place is Alex Zanardi. The battle we saw was David Fuminelli there in that white BMW trying to get past Sasha Halleck in front of him for the 12th place fight. Because of the nature of the Brands Hatch circuit, a lot of high-speed corners, it's difficult to get into position to make an overtake maneuver. Cars coming into clearways now. You can see the Lamborghini's front of short snows down the inside of the McLaren, but 
not really a realistic opportunity. Up at the pinnacle, Ben, you've got to be absolutely alongside square with the car you're passing. Best shot, as always, is up the inside into, into Druids, the hairpin band here at Brands Hatch, but it is very easily defended. That is Thomas Enger trying to find his way uh, past Fabio and Edi in front of him in the McLaren. The, the Lamborghini has shown much more pace, and that, unfortunately, into the pits is the number three Audi. So Stefano Telli, after a difficult qualifying, is now enduring a difficult qualifying race. It looked as though they were putting the, the rollers underneath and are going to retire that car. On board we go then, into the left-hander. This is Enger we're on board with, I think, trying to get past the Lamborghini in front of him. As we come up now towards Pilgrim's Drop, where the circuit plunges under the Johnny Herbert Bridge and up towards the right-hander at Hawthorne. Look at this for commitment. The commitment really comes on the entry to the corner. You can carry a lot more speed because it's quite a heavily cambered corner. Looks to go down the inside into Westfield, Ben. McLaren defends that, stops. Thomas Enger trying to make a move, a place, again, hard to make a clean pass. You've got to have a lot of speed out of Hawthorne to be in position to block the corner for the car you're competing with. Stefan Rossini looking pretty chilled as his teammate. Well, he said he was retired, looks like he has been retired. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, uh, he's watching his teammate Enger, who we were just on board with, try and find his way past the McLaren. He goes for it into clearways. Great move from Thomas Enger. He moves up into 14th position. That puts a smile on Stefan Rossini's face as we now watch uh, David Fuminelli trying to get past Sasha Halleck down into Paddock Hill Bend. Nothing doing, but this is where he can try and get the cut back into Druids, but he was too far away from the apex there. Yeah, but he's got a good run up the hill, whether he can get alongside the Lamborghini. Again, it's easy to defend. You can cut across the approach to Druid, block off the inside line from the car that is making the attack. Danger, of course, is that contact can sometimes arise and contact to Druid's Bend is a familiar part of Brands Hatch Motor Racing. And this, ma uh, this battle is going to be joined now by Thomas Enger. Fuminelli spent so long trying to get past the Lamborghini in front of him that he's just lost a place to the Czech driver and unless uh, the BMW can get the cutback, which it can't. So now Thomas Enger is up into 13th place and will be trying to get past Sasha Halleck in 12th before too long. Canny old Thomas Enger. <laughs> he's a natural racer. Into Surtees is always a favourite place of mine to overtake. And it's a corner that you can run very deep into because the apex is so far around the corner that by doing so you compromise the car you've overtaken and you can then get control of the corner. Thomas Enger did it to perfection. Up we go into the right-hander of Sheen Curve. He keeps it nice and tidy, whereas Sasha Halleck gets a little out of shape. Now into the left-hander of Sterling's, and he's tucked right under the back of the Lamborghini in front. Are we going to see a repeat move from Enger on the way down into clearways? He looks to the inside, but a little too far back at the moment. Up at the front, Vanthor is still leading, by the way. We've had so many squabbles in the middle of the pack that, uh, that we've forgotten about that. Vanthor's half a second in front of Bleeker Molen, who in turn is a second ahead of Finkelhoff, with Max Goetz still running in fourth position. So tight battles everywhere you look here on the Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit. It's fantastic action, and we've only had seven minutes of it. But here up at the front is the battle. Vanthor going very wide there. And he needs to be very careful if he's going to do that on a regular basis. He may well get the on-sporting flag wave to him. He needs to rein in that exuberance on the exit of Graham Hill Bend. And he's got Jerome Blake Mullen. He's actually, Blake Mullen, I think, has actually narrowed the gap from the initial opening lap that we saw Van Thor steam away. So Jerome Blakemullen in the Lamborghini, clearly in a very strong position. And here's a look at the inside from Rene Rast into Hawthorne Bend, side by side with Bueno, and Rast goes through. Brilliant maneuver, but Bueno's gonna try and fight back. No, Bueno's gonna lose out to the Ferrari behind. Montemini sees it all unfolding and says, thank you very much, I'll have that seventh place. So Rast is sixth. Montemini is now seventh, Caca Bueno down to eighth. That's the art of being a racing driver, looking and seeing opportunities and then seizing it. And that was what Montemini did coming into Westfield Bend. The BMW was compromised because of the pass by Rennie Raz. Montemini saw the opportunity, got up the right in the inside, to two places down to BMW. Here's our top three across the line then. At the end of lap five, Lawrence Van Thor leads, only six tenths of a second clear of Finkelhock. And that same gap is produced back towards uh, Finkelhock in third position. Van Thor, Bleekemol and Finkelhock, the top three. Max Goat still running in fourth place. Valdino Brito is lapping very, very quickly in fifth position in the BMW. Great to have him in the series. Two times Brazilian GT champion alongside Matez Stump. He's currently leading the Brazilian Stock Car Championship. Wonderful to have him here. I, I wonder, do we need Nelson Piquet Jr. back? I mean, <laughs> we're seeing a great drive by the Brazilian in replacing uh, the younger Brazilian Piquet. So uh, I think the team might be impressed by this performance. So here's the battle with uh, David Fuminelli still on the back of Sasha Halleck. Those two were doing battle uh, a long time ago. 
and then Thomas Enger got past both of them, so the battle was calmed down for a moment. But now it looks like it's going to kick off again, just up in front of that as well. Mark Basseng and Mateusz Lisowski are having a nice squabble over 10th place. Here they are turning into Hawthorne Ben now. It's Basseng in front in the white and blue Phoenix Audi, and behind is Mateusz Lisowski. Behind them, it's Thomas Eng. Well, Thomas Eng has been the man on the move, starting at the right of the tail of the field. And he's made his way past some of the slower cars. Every car he gets close to now is going to become more difficult. Oh, and a big, big slide. <laughs> Thomas Enger into the sheet curve, back end of the Lamborghini, went all in the wrong direction, got it back in control. That shows you how committed Enger is to try making up his third of these three cars coming into clearways. Contact between cars 1 and 84 at the start is under investigation. So that's Van Thor and Goats, the two front row men. So that'll be interesting to see what happens. But here comes Fuminelli attacking now, right up behind Sasha Halleck. But the BMW struggles in a straight line. He's going to have to try and do the switchback maneuver again. But he hasn't been able to put it off so far. Halleck goes wide this time, though. He knows it, covers the inside line up towards Druid. Fuminelli not late enough on the brakes. Oh, Sasha Halleck's gone in very deep. Keeps it together just about. Yeah, the, the big thing was that Fuminelli realized that the Lamborghini was going to close the door early. He just got out of the, out of the throttle. He didn't attempt to force the issue because he wasn't sufficiently far alongside because any contact would have resulted in damage more to the BM than to the Lamborghini. A quick shot of Stefano Colombo we saw there, which is uh, David Fuminelli's teammate. And coming up behind them now is Fabio Anidi. So it's a three-way squabble over 13th position. Up at the front, the gap is just eight tenths of a second between Van Thor and Bleekermolen still as we cut back to the battle over 10th place. Mark Basseng ahead of Mateusz Zizovski, ahead of Thomas Eng, and then another three-car train behind which is the Halleck, Fuminelli, and Edi squabble. So action everywhere on the circuit at the moment. A little look towards the inside by Thomas Eng. He is seriously fired up as he tries to fight his way through the order. And he's very, very quick through Sheen Curve as well. He's got the line. He knows the quick way through Sheen Curve. Got the confidence to commit, and that's the key to this lap. We're going to see some action at Clearways, I think, because it was looking pretty close as Enger looks towards the inside. It was almost three abreast behind as they came into Clearways as well. But no movements in either of those fights by the looks of things. Yep, it's still Halleck, followed by Fuminelli, followed by Anidi. Anidi might have a shot here coming down into Paddock Hill Bend because McLaren's pretty nifty in a straight line, but no, nothing doing this time around. So, only 10 minutes gone in this race, and it's been non-stop. Well, it's a minute for the drivers. Believe me, it's as frantic as it is in the commentary booth. It is physically <laughs> hard. The temperature and the ambient here is high at this early part of Sunday morning. It's only going to get hotter for the, for the championship race in uh, the early afternoon. So, there's the crowd in the grandstand watching on. Brilliant to see such a, a big turnout here at Brands. It's the first time they've had international sports car racing here for 18 years since the 1996 BPR Global GT Championship came here, which was in part organized by Stefan Rattel. And there is a man in the field who raced that weekend. Well, actually, he's not in the field anymore. Stefan Ortelli has retired, but he won his class here 18 years ago in the GT2 Porsche 911. And really, there's not a huge amount of difference to the Brands Hatch track. There's Obviously, for safety, there's been extensions to the gravel traps and the runoff areas, but the character of this racetrack really is unchanged since the Grand Prix loop was introduced in the early 60s. They had a small chicane at Dingle Dell for a while, didn't they? That might have been around the, the 96 period, but, in, but you're absolutely right. In general, it's absolutely identical to, well, to when you were racing here in 1985. I mean, the, the, the big change to me is the bottom, what used to be called Bottom Bend, which is now known as Graham Hill Bend, and that has been slowed down, again, for safety reasons taken away a little bit of the, 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 the pleasure of what was a great corner bottom bend and uh, has been named after the two times world champion, Graham Hill. Lawrence Van Thor leads, eight tenths of a second clear of your own Bleeker Molen in second place in the Lamborghini. Third spot still for Marcus Vingelop with Max Goetz in fourth. Fifth place for Valdeno Brito and sixth place now for Rene Rast. But Rast has got right onto the back of Brito. Here they are coming out of Surtees Bend. Montemini, meanwhile, uh, is up into seventh position. So a strong run from him as the Brazilian BMW team under the astute guidance of Antonio Herman. Watch on. And a little bit wide there for Bueno. This is the, sorry, for Brito as they battle over fifth place. And uh, Rene Ratz will do a good job if he can finish in fifth spot because he had a difficult qualifying session. Only started in eighth on the grid for, uh, for a driver who's very quick. Contact between cars three and uh, 85 are under investigation as well. So that is Stefan Ortelli and Sergei Afanasyev, both of whom came uh, into the yes, pits. That's a problem. Ortelli is out, Afanasyev is still yeah, going. I mean, all that happened coming through Panicle Bend up into Druid in the opening lap. And that was initially actually caused by Van Thor's 
you know, defence of his pole position uh, and the attack from Maximilian Goetz. So this battle for fifth place comes flashing underneath our commentary box and into Paddock Hill Bend now. Valdeno Brito, his first ever visit to uh, the UK, I think, for a race, let alone Brands Hatch. But it's brilliant to have him here, as we've said earlier. Rene Rast, an experienced racer, as he now is right under the rear wing of that BMW as they exit Graham Hill Bend and head along the Cooper Strait. Yeah, and this is an opportunity for Rene Rast to stick that audio down the inside. He's trying it. He's got it alongside. Can he hold it? No, the BMWs. Oh, there's a touch there. To, yeah, but the BMWs sufficiently far ahead, carried the speed around the outside of Sergi's curve and was able to maintain that position. But Rene Rast did the right thing. He just was maybe half a car short of being able to take control. Yep, very close coming into Surtees that time around. And, and uh, the thing for Valdino Brito is he will now know that that's an opportunity that Rast would like to exploit. And they need to be careful because Andrea Montemini in the Vilba Corsa Ferrari is right up behind them as well. So it's turning into a three-way scrap over fifth position. And uh, Max Goetz really is all on his own at the moment in fourth spot. He's two, got two seconds in front of him, two seconds behind him, as here comes uh, Montemini. Montemini attacking as they come down into clearways. Rasko's very defensive. It's a problem. Yeah, he must have picked up damage perhaps from that little bit of contact. Vincent Voss furious in the WRT pits. Rast is going to have to come in. He's got a right front tyre going down. Contact with the right front left rear of the BMW, and that's why Rennie Rast has had to come in. That's given the advantage to, to Andrea Montemini, who had caught up to the tail of the ID. There it is. Well, they've got to change the left front as well, but suffice to say that uh, it was that mild contact that took place in Surtees between the BMW and the ID when they were making that battle over fifth place. And that's the danger. There's the right front now being changed. That was a tower that no doubt has been damaged. Rennie Rast, all that effort to get alongside the BMW into South Bank. There's the result. Pit stop, changed two front tires and he goes back pretty much last of the field. And we've still got 10 minutes remaining before the pit stop window opens as well, so that's a, a real shame for René Rast because he was on a, a, a brilliant uh, race. Contact between cars 2 and 30 uh, is under investigation, which is the contact we just yeah, saw. I mean, that's a racing incident, there's nothing more. Those are two drivers going at it, absolutely you know, committed up the inside. There was no intent to, to cause damage. It was just the consequence of defence and attack. We've also finally had a change for 12th position. David Fuminelli just forced his way uh, past uh, Sasha Halleck into Paddock Hill Bend. So Fuminelli is through and up into 12th position eventually. But there's our race leader. And he's still running very, very wide on the exit of bottom bend, or bottom of now Graham Hill Bend. Oh, sorry, that was Rene Rast, my apologies. Yeah, Rene Rast coming back on. But that's uh, both Rene Rast and Lawrence Van Thor were using right at the limit of what would be acceptable by race director. Let's look again. Now, He's a little bit far behind, but he takes the opportunity, runs deep, deep, deep into the corner, but he's that half car length behind. There you see it, and almost at the apex, can't quite get control. There was the contact, so it didn't do anything to the BMW, but it was just sufficient to nick the outside of the rim of the tyre on the Audi for Rennie Rast, and once that had happened, he knew that that, you know, he would have been angry with himself. So now we're looking at our race leader, Laurence Van Thor, defending champion, leading the way in the qualifying race. He and Cesar Ramos, of course, won the qualifying race in Nagaro. So they are more than used to taking victory this season, but haven't been able to sort it out when it mattered. There's the Grasso Racing team. The Lamborghini squad have uh, their car in second place at the moment. Your own Bleeker Molen, who really is an exceptional performer, two-time Porsche Super Cup champion, your own Bleeker Molen and he's been a, a brilliant addition to the championship. He's done sort of bits and bobs of, uh, of racing for, for a long time now, Bleeke Molen, and it's finally, it's good to have him finally doing a full season with us. Yes, very much so. And a driver who really is, a, is an enhancement to the, the Blancpain sprint series in that Lamborghini, and holding a gap, it's been round 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 of a second currently. There you see 0.814 is the gap between first and second. Jerome Blake and Mullen deciding probably wisely he's not going to find it easy to find a way past Lauren Van Thor on the lead Audi. So he's not overusing the, uh, overusing the Lamborghini. He may have an opportunity if they do find themselves catching up some of the back end of the, pad of the field before the pit lane window opens, which he's going to do in just over seven minutes. Uh, so the long and short of all that Rast action was that uh, Andrea Montemini now is up into sixth place in the Viorba Corsa. Ferrari, so it's 6th for Montemini, 7th for Bueno, and side by side between 
the uh, Mercedes and the McLaren, and I think that is Miguel Toril losing out to Sten Pentas as they come into Druids. And uh, yep, Sten Pentas is through then, and Miguel Toril drops down into 16th position. And here's the continuing battle as the cars head over the line. This is Sasha Halleck now under pressure from Fabio Anidi over 13th place. Now, here's the here's the incident at the start again. Yeah, because Max Gutz got a very good start on the left. You see the contact of the Audi and then and the Mercedes-Benz. Lawrence Van Four had to go very deep into the corner, which caused him to run wide, which led to that contact with the Mercedes-Benz. And that was what is, or what is going to be investigated by the race steward after this race. They may decide that was a racing incident. They may take further action. What do you reckon? I would call it a racing incident. I mean, both drivers were maximizing their opportunities at the start. Gertz was fractionally ahead, but Van Thor was on the inside, so you know, I would say it's a no-score draw. There's um, Stefano Telli having a little chat with 1996 Monaco Grand Prix winner Olivier Panis, as the two of them are out of the race. Well, Panis didn't enter the race, but Ortelli is out of the race. He and uh, Roman Rusinov. So Rusinov, who's making his Blanc Pan Sprint Series debut this weekend. He was replaced by Gregory Gilvera at the opening round in Nagaro, but Rusinov isn't going to get the chance to drive. But so good, bad, and terrible really for WRT so far, with uh, Van Thor leading, but Rast running into trouble and Ortelli out of the race. Although Ortelli is racing under the G Drive Racing banner, it's still a car that's uh, run by the WRT Audi squad. As we watch Marcus Vingelhock in third place as he tries to find a way past your own bleaker motor in front, but the gap is equidistant for yeah, second I mean, or third. The, the first three cars were all running, and, he, and the pace really being dictated by Lawrence Van Thorpe. Neither the second place Lamborghini, or yeah, your own bleaker motor, or the ID behind that of Marcus Winkelhock are in a position to really, and look at Nicky Meyer Menhoff, he's sitting there quite fired up at the prospects of getting into the Audi. That's running in third place. And you can see nobody is making a move. First, second, third, covered by 0 0.7, 0 0.5 between second and third, and second and first. Into Paddock Hill Bend. Your own Bleak Komolen won the Nürburgring 24 hour race last year alongside Bernd Schneider, Nicky Tim, and the late Sean Edwards. In an Audi, I think that was, as they come down into the uh, into the left hander, in a Mercedes, sorry, of course. Yeah, but Mar Marcus Winkelhock's yeah. looking close. I'm just going to say, Marcus Winkelhock, just coming through Paddock Hill Bend. Up through Druids, down to Graham Hill Bend, seems to have closed the gap fractionally. And again, you can see into into Surtees as they come through. They used to be called South Bank. Now the Audi is actually much closer to the tail of the Lamborghini as they go on to what will be the 15th lap of this one-hour race than it has been probably at any point. Then on a straight line, the Lamborghini stretches its legs, but there is clearly a little bit more grip available to Marcus Winkelhock in third place than the Audi than Jerome Blakemullen currently might have with the Lamborghini. Finkelhock has a lot of experience here of the Indy circuit, I think having raced uh, in the DTM for three years, but the DTM only, as I say, used the Indy part of the circuit, which basically is where they turn left at Surtees and head out into the woods. On the Indy circuit, you just turn right and rejoin the, the track once again. It's a very short loop. This is the where they all, the, the Grand Prix circuit rejoins the Indy circuit, but Finkelhock is looking very racy, the 2012 FIA GT1 World Champion. And what a great place this is to get some snaps of cars as well. Well, you've got the natural amphitheatre of what they call the Indy Circuit of France. And of course, if you go out into the country, you've got, I mean, you could be literally in the country. The Garden of England, Kent. And that's where we are for the second round of the Blancpain GT Sprint Series. Lawrence Van Thor leading the way. Eight tenths of a second clear of your own Bleeker Merlin in second, who's only four tenths of a second clear of Winkelhock in third. Max Goes still in fourth. Here's the battle now with Mark Basseng. He's under a lot of pressure from Thomas Eng in the battle over ninth place. So they've all moved up a slot, having uh, Rene Rast retire. And also that means Eng has got past Lizowski. Yep. And just keep an eye, Thomas Enger coming out of Druids, dropping down to Graham Hill Bend. Is he going to have a little thought about looking up the inside, going into Surtees? Currently from this position, the wide angle shot from the camera on board the Lamborghini. Not clearly close enough to have a go, but that's going to be a favourite spot of Thomas Engers to try and make another move forward, having started at the back of the grid, having not been able to compete in qualification. We saw two different lines there going into Surtees. Is, is that the norm? We saw Bassen go in wider, get his apex later, whereas uh, Eng, who we're on board with, seemed to go in earlier. I think it's a, two things. It's a personal choice and what suits your car. And uh, Thomas Engers' line, the tighter line, holding the apex, or getting the apex maybe slightly earlier, as opposed to the best thing, taking the much more acute turn. I prefer the Thomas Engel line, because I could get more feel from the front of the car. 
as I was getting into the corner. Into Sterling's they come. This is all the battle over ninth place up the road in front of them is uh, Alex Zanardi in eighth position at the moment. Running strongly, but with front right bodywork damage, Alex Zanardi, so uh, there must have been contact between him and someone else on the opening lap, because I think I saw the BMW bodywork uh, on the exit of the corner at Sterling's. As they come into Paddock Hill Bend once more to complete lap 16, and the pit stop window will pretty much be open by the time they finish this lap. Not quite, actually. Now, the lead car will have to, it'll get uh, one more lap before he can come in. But we're just down to what, 1 minute and 20 seconds before it does open. Considering a lap time right now, we're running at what, the 125. So it'll be one more lap for everybody before they can think about coming in for that mandatory driver change. And uh, your own Bleaker Molin won't be coming in yet because Harry Project still had his overalls tied around his waist. So no urgency there. Bleaker Molin, the quicker of the two drivers, I think it's fair to say. And Harry Project will be the man taking over. So one Phoenix Audi is on the defence, that's Mark Basseng, and that there is Harry Prochik getting ready to take over from Blika Molen. One Phoenix Audi on the defence in the hand of Mark Basseng, this Phoenix Audi on the attack in the hands of Marcus Winkelhock as they come up into clearways once more. Still a lonely fourth place for Maximilian Goetz, and Max Boot was telling me that their race pace is brilliant, so unless possibly Goetz picked up a bit of a knock from that well, first they're corner. Made the, they're made the, well, could well be damaged to the right front of the Mercedes-Benz because you could clearly see on the replay that there was contact between Van Foor's Audi and Goetz's Mercedes. Whether that's having any bearing on the performance of the Mercedes or not, we don't know, but certainly the pace of the Mercedes, both in outright speed terms, but as, as you say, on a long run, particularly when the track was getting very hot, was an impressive pace. It's also getting close over fifth position with Baldino Brito only just ahead of Andrea Montemini, three tenths of a second separating them as they cross the line that time. The pit stop window is open here at Brands Hatch. Lawrence Van Thor leading seven tenths clear of Bleeker Molen in second place. Third place for Marcus Finkelhock in the Phoenix Audi. There are the top three flashing into Hawthorne Bend at the top of the hill, then into Westfield, the sort of double apex right-hander before you plunge down into the dip at Dingle Dell, and even when you walk around the circuit to try and watch these cars, you get out of breath walking from Dingle Dell up to Sheen. I know that this circuit has got a great deal of elevation, probably more than any circuit that we would go to around the world. It is a physical racetrack in every sense of the word. There's Thomas Eng, the Czech driver, veteran of three Formula One Grand Prix in 2001 for the Prost team, uh, when he replaced Luciano Berti, who was injured in a crash at Spa that year, and he is working the wheel in 10th place at the moment, trying to find a way past Mark Basseng. The top three across the line again then. Which of these guys is going to be the first to blink and come into the pits? I Actually, I tell you it is, it's going to be Maximilian Goetz. Yeah. Because the Mercedes-Benz has taken the opportunity, the earliest opportunity to come into the pit lane. Maybe a good decision from the team, the HRT team, to get this car and put Maximilian Book into it. He will be jumping ready. You can see him there. He's about five foot nothing. Goetz is a little bit taller. Seat insert needed for Maximilian Book. So that change will hopefully get the Mercedes-Benz out into relatively clear track when the car returns to the racetrack, having made their pit stop. Great to see Max Book as we see uh, Sasha Hallett coming in and uh, Fabio Anidi coming in as well. But it's great to see Max Book at the forefront of international motorsport because he had a brilliant single-seater career in his younger days. In 2002, he was second in Formula BMW Germany behind Rosberg. Then 2003, he won the championship, beating Vettel. But it took him, it's taken him another 10 years or so to, to get back to the front of international motorsport, winning the uh, Spa 24-hour last year as we go side by side. So this is, now this is Rene Rast, who has made a pit stop, and but that was an out-of-sync pit stop, so that doesn't really count. But he's challenging Max Book into Graham Hill Bend, and, and Rene Rast will know that this could have an impact on his teammates' race. Yeah, but the remember, Max Book has got a fresh set of tyres on board, but Rene Rast, although he's got two fresh front tyres for that un unscheduled pit stop, nevertheless, the Mercedes will have the advantage, and Max Book there, you can see as they come onto what is Hawthorne straight, that's the drop, Pingl Pilgrim's drop, then into Hawthorne's rise, that's the bit we are now on, then into the cambered, quite heavily cambered, right-hand corner at Hawthorne's. In the days of ground effect cars, they were taking that corner at about 160 miles an hour, not braking, just breathing the throttle. Really? That was the effect of ground effects had when, what, some long time ago, 32 years ago. 
Cesar Ramos getting ready to take over from our race leader, Laurence Fanthor. Pit work is going to be vitally important here, and so could overtaking be, because look at this, Marcus Vingelhock, closest that he's possibly ever been to the back of your own Bleaker Molen, coming towards Hawthorne Bend, still not close enough, but Vingelhock is really starting to look racy. WRT very strong in the pits. GR Grazza Racing Team are pretty decent as well, as are Phoenix. So this is going to be this is going to be pretty close. And now Zanardi we're looking at, and he's got uh, Sasha Halex old. Uh, no, it is still Sasha Halex. No, he must have been in the pit, so it's not going to be Sasha Halex anymore. It's going to be Stefan Landman making his Blanc Pan GT Series debut. So I think those two are out of sync at the moment because Zanardi hasn't made his pit stop. Here come the top three out of clearways once more through Clark Curve and they're staying out. They're going to stay out, I think, until the pit stop window is about to close, which it will do in just over six minutes' time. So while you've got your three drivers all running you know, at the pace they're running at, stay out, basically, and particularly in the case of Lawrence Van Thor, he'll be handing over to Cesar Ramos, so he probably wants to maximise the next track time, seat time, as the BMW comes into the pits. Yeah, but I think that's Kaka Bueno coming into the pit lane from sixth position. Alex Zanardi has come in as well to do his tyre change. Zanardi not uh, swapping drivers, of course, but there is Kaka Bueno handing over to Sergio Jimenez. Those two look all set for a podium in Nagaro in the opening round of the season, but the last few laps, they just got mugged. Yeah, yeah, and you could see on the, on the replay at the start of the show, we had Sergio Jimenez face when Cacabueno let the Mercedes get through at the end of the pit straight to the BMW. Brazil BMW has done a good job turning that car around as it now makes its way down the pit lane. Sergio Jimenez behind the wheel as he comes back into the field. And just to clarify, there's no advantage gained for Zanardi by not changing driver, because when the other guys change driver, that takes a lot less time than changing all the wheels. So there's no advantage to be gained there. If, and uh, it's going to be tough work for Zanardi, as we've already discussed. Halfway through this race, then, 30 minutes to go. There's our top three, glued together as they have been since the opening lap. Laurence Van Thor leading the way. Jerome Bleekermolen in second place in the Lamborghini. Third place for Marcus Fingelhock at the moment. Max Goetz has come into the pits from fourth place to hand over to Max Book. So that'll be the interesting thing, is to watch um, Max Book's lap times. I don't think he's done a, he's done a quick lap yet. A 125. That was his best lap. No, no, so. He's on his first flying lap yeah. now, so we're going to have to wait for him to finish that lap before we get the Three tenths of a second quicker. So Buka's come across the line to do a 126.0. These guys are doing 126.3s and 4s. So if Boot can keep that sort of pace up for a couple of laps, he could possibly force himself into contention. Well, if you consider the lap time of everybody in the top three is identical, 25.3, 25.3, 25, just 4. So if Max Book can get into the bottom part of the 125, even a 124, he can actually potentially elevate himself by the time these lead three cars will funnel through their pit stop programme. He could find himself actually in a very strong position, if not leading the race overall. Into the pits comes René Rast for the second time to hand over to Enzo Eid. And Enzo was confident that they could fight their way up the order when I spoke to him just before I came up here, actually. But uh, that hasn't turned out to be the case. They were fighting their way through the now, order. Is anybody going to make a pit stop? We've just got two minutes, really, two and a half minutes remaining before we... The idea is good. I thought it was going to make a very late cut, but has the... Well, no, all three have still remained on track. So the first three cars staying out. They'll have to come in pretty much towards the end of this current lap. They've just gone on to lap 23. Yeah, I don't... I don't think they'll have time to do another lap, will they? So, no, I think so they could do it, but they're out of time, so they're going to have to all come in together. Yeah, so and I think that will work to the benefit of Maximilian Book, who is back out on track and who is running quickly. It'll also ramp up the pressure on the teams in the pit lane as well. So this is going to be very entertaining pit lane action in a few minutes' time. Van Thor continues to lead the way on a beautiful day at Brands Hatch. The crowd are out in force. The pit lane was full at half past eight this morning for the for the pit lane walkabout. It was incredible walking in here, and uh, hopefully the Blanc Plan GT Sprint Series will be coming to Brands Hatch for a good number of years. Out of the pit lane goes uh, the uh, 30 car of Valdino Brito. He's now handed over to Matteo Stump, and they have actually had a very good pit stop because uh, the Valorba Corsa Ferrari is a long way behind. Those two were neck and neck on track, but you see just see the Ferrari in the background. Yeah, but I was just looking at a quick glimpse of these three lead cars, and they've all closed up, I think, more than they've been in the previous lap. Coming through Sheen Curve, you see Lawrence Van Thor, the Lamborghini of 
And Gurren Blekamulun looks fractionally closer, and of course, by Winkelhock in the third place. They've all got to come in, I believe, now. There's only 27 minutes remaining, so they're all three coming in. I think they might be able to get another lap out of this, no, but they're going to have another, no. but they're going to have an obstruction because there's a BMW sideways on the start finish straight there. Can't quite make out which well, BMW that is. I think it might be Zanardi, but then into the pits came Laurence Van Thorpe and Marcus Winkelhock. So, first and third coming in. Your own Bleeker Molen staying out there for another time. But what's going to happen with it? It is Zanardi, unfortunately. Can he get going for us not to need a safety car? He tries to get the car turned around, lights up the rear tires. But he's now gone into the gravel. gravel. Oh dear, it's gone from bad to worse for Alex Zanardi. Got caught out on the exit of Clark Cove. And Jerome Blakemullen, the only the one of the three lead cars who choose to stay out, running it to the very, very outset limit. There's the car, the Audi lead Audi now. Being taken up by Cesar Ramos, runs on the pit. They've and he's it. got through! Mayor Manhoff has got the advantage. So Marcus Winkelhock and Nicky Mayer Manhoff move in front of Cesar Ramos and Laurence Van Thor in the pit stop. And here comes a Mercedes Benz who is going to take the lead. Not no, quite. No, going to get second place for sure, but with the momentum that Maximilian Book has got, that's the gap between effectively first and second on the road. Brilliant, so into the lead of the race goes Nicky Mayer Melnoff for the time being, when all said and done, but we've still got to wait for your own Bleeker Mullen and Harry Project to make their pit stops. Also, what could come into the equation is if the safety car is needed for Alex Zanardi's car, because he tried to do a donut to get out of uh, trouble, but he's ended up in the gravel trap, and how difficult that must be because he's got to operate the throttle and the clutch. And the safety car the has pits. been deployed. Safety car, in. Okay, so Lamborghini in, safety car deployed, and is that that's going to slow the, the current top three that are out there on the circuit at the Grand Prix loop. That's going to force them to slow down. So this should be an open goal for Harry Prochik and Jeroen Bleekemolen to move into the lead of the race. There's the reason the safety car's out. Alex Zanardi beached in the gravel trap on the exit of Clearways. But here's the action in the pit lane. The Grasser racing team run by the brilliant Gottfried Grasser are uh, looking, staring at the lead of the race here. Out of the pits goes Harry Prochik and this is going to be comfortable for him surely because the rest of the cars out there on circuit having to slow down, put their hand up, yes marshals, we see the yellow flags and that's totally ruined them. Yeah absolutely and that's just thrown the, 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 the field in effect into the hands Oh, that Lamborghini with Harry Project now behind the wheel having been, I mean, a really, really late roll of the dice. Your own Blake Mullen would have been coming into the pit lane with literally seconds remaining before the pit lane window closed. And then, of course, the Nardi's incident and the exit of Clark Curve spinning, then doing a donut, but in the process rolling backwards over the grass verge. The rear wheels got bogged down in the gravel trap. The gravel did the job it's there to do, which is to arrest the car, but it also it prevented Alex Zanardi getting the car back on track, and what disappointment for the Italian driver. So there is your own Bleeker Molin, who's got out of the car. Looks like it's been hard work out there, but he's only done half happy. an hour. <laughs> I mean, that shows you how much work you do at Brands Hatch. Physically demanding racetrack. So there's our race leader, Harry Prochick. Now, the difficult thing is, he is currently at the furthest point of the circuit, whilst the safety car is coming past our commentary box now. So, uh, quite how the uh, the race directors are going to deal well, with this. The safety car did not pick up. Well, he couldn't safety. pick up the leader no, really because the leader was in the pits. So it's a it's a challenging situation. But there is Zanardi. A real shame to see him uh, out of the race. And uh, well, John, he's he's con he's controlling the throttle with his fingers, the clutch with his thumbs. Yes. This is a difficult thing to pull off. I, I mean, he couldn't even get the thing to spin. When he got it to spin, he was already committed. And of course, then the back end of the car just rotated. And then the momentum took it backwards into the gravel. The gravel here is a very effective gravel trap. It does stop cars, but in doing so, it also prevented Alex Zanardi getting any traction from the rear of the BMW to drive back onto the track and continue. So, just trying to figure out what's going to happen here then. So Bleekemolen, uh, sorry, Prochik is up at the hairpin now, so he's soon going to join the back of the queue of cars. Will they then have to let the 10 cars or so go through past the safety car in order to get the uh, the car of Harry Prochik that's leading the race up at the front? That'll be the, the big question for the race directors. But well, now that everybody's had their pit stops, so everybody's effectively back in the race with the number two or the second driver, Alex Zanardi has been retrieved, he's underway, so he's lost a lap, but he will be able to continue on. 
but then whether the safety car will then wave through all the cars behind until they get the race leader who is going to be uh, the Harry project. Harry project in the Lamborghini uh, we wait to see so that would be the obvious thing to do but that in effect means the safety car is going to have to wave everybody through until he gets to the Lamborghini, which is the last car currently, with the exception of Alex Zanardi, in the line. So Alex Zanardi back out on circuit. He is allowed to rejoin the race because although this is a sprint race, it's run to the Blanc Pan GT regulations. And in you know the Spa 24 hour race, you can get towed back on track and, and carry on with your race. Losing a couple of laps is, uh, is punishment enough. Jerome Bleekemolen then. Very happy man because his car is leading the race. They were looking very strong at Nagaro in the qualifying race as well before contact between Prochik and uh, Enzo Eid. So we go on board with Maximilian Buk. Brilliant work from the HDP guys. Okay, they've only gained one place, but they're up into the top three. And how frustrated will uh, WRT be? Because Van Thor and Ramos were leading the race. Now they're in fourth position. Well, they had a slow pit stop, which is uncharacteristic of the team, and they were just, just the safety car now waving through, we're just seeing on screen, all the cars that were behind the safety car, they're now being allowed to go ahead of the safety car. It will pick up the lead car, which is Harry Project in the Lamborghini, that had been so ably driven by Jerome Blake and Bolin on the opening stint. Then the entire field's gonna have to do another complete lap at whatever pace they're gonna be at. They've got, they can't go at race pace, but they've gotta to go to a fairly substantial pace to enable them to take another two laps before they can all get behind the uh, the safety car, which has now got Harry Project in, in effect, the lead of this race. So you can see the disappointment there on Van Thor's face, but with 20 minutes to go, we've got the top six all together, finished off with those two Brazilian BMWs, but then from seventh down to uh, 16th, everyone else is in, is in a different queue. Yeah, but what I'm gonna be interested in is when the safety car pulls off, can Harry Project hold off Nicky Meyer Melnhoff? More likely, can he hold off Maximilian Buch? Yeah. Because when they come across the line, you're going to think that if they're half alert, half awake, they're going to be right up the boot lid of each other's cars. And there we see the cars coming. Yes, yeah, so they're making their way around, just filtering through. And they actually are running pretty much at race pace. Yeah. I wonder if that's a, where's the safety car? Scared the where's life out of me, John. I thought that the race was underway. But in fact, there's about a chain of about 12 cars all making their way back as quickly as possible. And that marshal's a bit confused as well. He started waving the green flag, but we are still under safety car conditions. And Someone's gone in the gravel. I think I just saw at the back of that shot. I think Aman Ibrahim has just gone into the gravel. Yes. And Gil Bent. Sorry, it's not Aman Ibrahim. He will have handed over now to uh, to his teammate, Miguel Torril. But uh, Torril into the gravel at Padigil Bend under safety car conditions, that might put him in well, a little I, bit of trouble. I suspect he's hoping that nobody actually saw it, except the television crew, and uh, will be <laughs> recorded. And so, it's a bit of a schoolboy error from Miguel Torlil, and uh, he'll be having to explain that one to Trevor Foster, team manager at Fortech Racing. So our top three are sort of in reverse experience order, because we've got Harry Prochik up at the front, who's, well, he was in the Pro-Am class of uh, FIA GT last year, finished second there with uh, Dominic Bauman. But since then, he's raced in the Mini Challenge in Germany. He did the Ford Fiesta Cup in Germany for three years. So he's not the, you know, the most experienced driver out there. Then it's Nicky Mayer Melnoff, who's really come to the fore, but he started off as an amateur. But a bit of a bit of a loose cannon at a times. A bit of a loose cannon at times. But then you got Maximilian Buch in third place, reigning Blanc Band Endurance Series champion. So this is going to be a mighty interesting battle. I think I alluded to that about five minutes ago. <laughs> I'm just clarifying. I'm just giving reasons. No, I mean, it is. It's going to be, for me, fascinating to see how when the safety car pulls in and these three cars, and if I was in the case of Nicky Mayo Melnhoff and Maximilian Book, I would want to get my car right under the rear wing of the Lamborghini and put maximum pressure I can on Harry Project as early as possible to force him into maybe making a small error to give you the opportunity because it's by only forcing the error that you're going to get the chance. If Harry Project can control his entry speed and exit speeds, then there's not very much second and third are going to be able to do about it. Bit of cross dissolve action between Caca Bueno and his onboard car camera, which is now in the hands of Sergio Jimenez. And uh, there is the multiple Brazilian stock car champion. Now, the safety car will be in this lap because there, the seventh place man, Felipe Salaquada, in the number 90 Ferrari, has caught the back of the top six. So we're going to have a good 16 and a half minutes of racing. Lights are still on. No, there we go. They've just turned them off on the MSV safety car. 
So we will be about to go racing again with first through to 13th place all in a line. And this is going to be an interesting experiment for Harry Prochik. I don't know if he's ever done a safety car restart. Uh, well, if he hasn't done one, before. he's on a steep learning curve. Nicky Meyer Melnoff has got the Audi right on the tail of the Lamborghini. Maxi Book needs to do the same. He might maybe think, well, if I hold back a little bit, and then when I get to clearways, I'm just going to boot the Mercedes Benz and try and get the momentum. Let's watch and see what happens. Harry Project floors the throttle as the race is restarted here at Brands Hatch. He leads the way in the second qualifying race of the season for the Blanc Pan GT Sprint Series. Second place is going to be Nicky Mermel off. Third is Maximilian Boot right up behind the Audi as they come into Paddock Hill Bend. Says uh, Ramos, a little asleep on the restart there, and he's dropped quite a, a large gap back to the third place battle and he's got pressure behind from Mateus Stump as they come up into Druids. Also, don't forget, we've now got Stefan Racina in the charging 88 Lamborghini, started at the back of the grid. Now it's up into eighth place as they turn through Graham Hill Bend. This is going to be fun. It's, That's the man yes, to watch. Though. Absolutely. Maximilian Book is the driver of the three leading cars to keep an eye on. You see what's going to happen. He's taking the wide entry, then they're going to make the late cutback, try and get a good drive out of Surtees, which is the south bank corner, of course, for those that remember brands pre the sort of 90s and then on to Hawthorne's the drop, Pilgrim's drop, Hawthorne's rise, can he get the Mercedes alongside defence from Nicky Mayer Melnoff, but again he leaves himself vulnerable, his exit speed under Hawthorne's maybe not quite as strong as the Mercedes. Everyone just looking around as they come down through Pilgrim's drop to try and see if there's a gap anywhere to be exploited. This is great news for Harry Project, means he can start to build a bit of a gap. Ramos is under huge pressure from Mateus Stump behind as well. The two-time Brazilian GT champion Stump is looking very racy as well. Out they come then, through Sterling's bend, back into the sunshine, back into the amphitheatre of the Brands Hatch Indy circuit, and Mayor Melnoff goes defensive. That could put him in trouble as they come onto the Brabham straight now, because Maximilian Buch is going to get right in the slipstream, looks to the outside, and he gets alongside the, Mercedes, the Audi as they come towards Paddock Hill. Can he go around the outside of Paddock Hill Bend? It looks like he might be able to. Brilliant move from Maximilian Buch. Oh. Max Coates is delighted on the pit wall. Fantastic move, he ran that well. We saw that uh, Mayor Melnhoff was getting very defensive and clear ways that inhibited his exit speed. Book got the run off the corner, had to go the long way up, down the pitch straight all the way up into Paddock and then got the outside line, carried the speed into Paddock and then took the lead. Great bit of thinking and uh, secondly, a great bit of driving from young Maximilian Book. We also had a change for fifth place because the two BMW Team Brazil cars swapped positions. So Sergio Jimenez is now up into fifth place. He got past his BMW Team Brazil uh, well, everything, everything was being backed up because of that battle for second place it allowed the two Team Brazil BMWs to get close. But, of course, if you're not looking behind as well as focusing on what you're going on ahead, and that's the reason why. Again, look at that group of cars, sixth all the way through to 14th, absolutely nose to tail, round Westfield Bend, down Dingle Dale, that's the tip, then the, and the graze up into Sheen Curve, the blind curve, you anticipate your clipping point, and then get on the throttle and shard of the brakes into Sterling's. Driving into Brands Hatch this morning, the sun was shining and I thought, we are going to have a good day today, John. And it's certainly not disappointing. Still 15 or so minutes to go in this race and the action is going to continue because right up at the front, Max Boot has closed in as we go on board with Jimenez. What can he do about Cesar Ramos in front of him? Tucks into the slipstream of the Audi on the way towards Paddock Hill Bend. A little look towards the inside, nothing doing. But side by side further back as the McLaren tries to get past. Way, way wide. And can he get the car? Oh, we just, well. Can't get it stopped in time, so Stefano Colombo loses ninth place to Giorgio Pantano. Interestingly, you got a Brazilian in fourth place in the Audi, and then two Brazilians in fifth and sixth place. They know each other very well indeed, and uh, of course they're familiar with racing in Brazil, but in hot weather like this, it's just, they could be anywhere in Brazil. Absolutely. Into the left-hander of Surtees they come then, and you can already see Nicky Mermanov starting to be dropped in that uh, fourth place. As they come out on the Pilgrim's drop, Harry Project still leading the way. Car 27 has been reportedly, uh, has a loose bonnet, which is Stefan Landman. He's currently in 15th place in his Lamborghini. As they turn through, and let's see a replay of this move from, from Book. Okay, he had the overspeed. You can see the Brazilians swapping places in the background, yeah. but outside of Paddock Hill Bend, that's a mega move. Yeah, it is, but when you take that line, you stay high coming into Paddock Hill Bend, that is actually the quickest way into and around, but it takes a big commitment, it takes a lot of confidence from the driver in the car he's driving. Surprised that Cesar Ramos is 
making more forward progress. Look at the leaders, nose to tail as they come into clearways. Look at everyone else, well, nose to tail as they come into clearways. The thing is that being in effect not being backed up by Cesar Ramos, and uh, then you've got the BMWs, the Ferrari in there as well. So it's all a case of one car controlling the pace of all the others behind. Now Sergio Jimenez was right behind Cesar Ramos, but nothing he can do about it so far. But maybe coming up in the Drew is there'll be a chance. He looks to the inside line. Ramos closes the door, but Jimenez oh, was both through. through. Mateus Stumpf comes through as well, and Ramos loses two places. There was a bit of contact, but Ramos was, was being pretty defensive. Yeah, but I mean, in fairness, both cars, they were effectively side by side. Ramos was trying to squeeze the BMW off the racetrack. So if anybody would be penalised, if there would be a penalty, it may well be Cesar Ramos because the BMW was sufficiently far out. Jimenez had put himself into a legitimate passing position. The contact is under investigation by the race stewards here. And that has given Nicky Mermel off a bit of a breather, currently in third place. So fourth and fifth place now for the BMW Team Brazil cars, which is brilliant to see. Here we go again. He was well along the oh, inside. Oh, absolutely. He was, I mean, they were, they were wheel to wheel. And you can see Ramos is just trying to boost the BMW literally off the racetrack. And in doing so, he then compromises his own situation. And the second BMW from Brazil just slides up. And that's what you want. A driver who's preoccupied with one action allows another car to slip through completely with ease. 11 minutes to go here in what has been an incredible qualifying race. We've still got another race to come up later today. We go on board with Sergio Jimenez out onto the Brabham Strait once more. He's going to complete his 32nd tour of this Branch Hatch Grand Prix circuit. A brilliant sound as they cross the line and dive down into Paddock Hill Bend. No movement in the field uh, so far, but uh, I, I can cope with a lap without getting too excited. Uh, just to just to calm down a little bit but up at the front is getting very close and you can see this is the kind of view the fans have two three four corners you can see the whole of the indie circuit but there's our race leader harry project max book is coming harry project actually has done a very strong job in the car handed over to him from joran beleka mullen because he's got a lot of pressure from maximilian book an established winning driver in sprints gt whatever 24-hour races and he's holding station. The gap is currently just under half a second, but it's not been decreasing. Maximilian Book has not been able to reduce that gap any further than currently he's got. Giorgio Pantano trying to find a way now past Stefano Colombo. He was uh, ahead as they crossed the line, so I'm not... Uh, oh, unless, sorry, that must be Daniel Lloyd trying to get past Stefano Colombo for 10th place. My apologies. Those... Uh, those uh, Bitec McLarens, I need to have a word with them because they've got nothing different on them to differentiate the pair of them. But look at the two Brazilian BMWs, nose to tail, and they're right behind Nicky Mermelnoff as well, and Andrea Montemini is now right behind Cesar Ramos as they come into And I'll tell you, Matt, Mateus Stump, he wants a bit of Sergio Jimenez racetrack. He's pushing his sister BMW as hard as he can. And this is the battle over, well, third place now. This is the final podium place that that white, BMW, uh, white Audi is currently occupying. Stefan Rossina is behind Salaquada, and he's got um, uh, Giorgio Pantano right up behind him as well in the Bitec McLaren. So, goodness me, there's action everywhere. Rossina noses towards the inside of uh, Philippe Salaquada in seventh place, but nothing doing just yet as they drop down into the left-hander of Graham Hill Bend. But you're right, Harry. Oh, and here's the chance up the inside. And Nicky Mermanov loses third place. And Through he's got, goes Sergio Jimenez. And he's going to lose fourth place if he's not careful because Mandela stumped right on the tail of the Audi. Can he get a run? Oh, we're going to see Mayor Mayanov going very defensive. They go down. Pilgrims drop up Hawthorne's rise into Hawthorne's bed. Well, he didn't have to be so aggressive. He's got a position, he's controlled it. So Stump will have to think where can I find a way past that Audi? My teammate got past, I want to get past as well. I wonder, I think Mayor Melov must have made a mistake coming out of Graham Hill Bend because Jimenez just seemed to, to breeze past him on the Cooper straight. Oh, here we go, this will tell us. Okay, the drop down into Graham Hill, under Druids, on the brakes, enter into the corner, watch what the Audi does. He's run very wide, yeah, he runs. That's Whoa. the reason why Brad, he had to get under the throttle because he ran so far wide, he was on the grass, the car was beginning to bounce around, and that's where the momentum came for Jimenez in the uh, BMW. Excitement for Caca Bueno as well, and it looks as though the battle for the lead is getting very close. Also, Nicky Mermanov losing positions, hand over fist on the way down to Paddock Hill Bend, but Book is just three tenths of a second behind Harry Prochick now in the battle for the lead of the race. And, uh, well, this is only to decide the grid for the main race later on, but they're taking it like this is to decide their lives as they come down into Graham Hill Bend. That's what happens when you race on a great racetrack. Instead of some of these 
flat, wide open spaces where you can see the next continent from the racetrack you're on. This is a proper racetrack, and racing drivers love driving on proper racetracks. That's why they're racing as they are right now. Through certes they come then. We have had a change for fourth place as well. Nicky Manmanoff has lost out to uh, Mateus Stump. There you can see Manmanoff now down into fifth position with Cesar Ramos down in sixth place now. And That'll, there'll be a lot of questions asked at WRC after this because Lawrence Van Thorpe leading the race, had it under control, but then a slow pit stop and now, yep. and now a slow car. The pit stop was the key to it. Let's look again and see we're coming out of Druids. Oh, so this is uh, Giorgio Pantano. Yeah, getting squeezed wide but manages to maintain the position. And is that oh. can't see where so everyone's chopping around. Yep. So Pantano's tried to get past Colombo and then Daniel Lloyd in the second Bitech has had both of them. Here's the lead. The gap was half a second, well, it was 0.3 of a second the last time across the line. It's probably very much the same as they now finish their 35th lap. Max Goat saying six and a half minutes remain. But th to be fair, I, I wonder how much of a. Uh, well, let's just see what happens here before I start speculating because it's all going to kick off down into Padagil Bend again. Giorgio Pantano trying to get past Daniel Lloyd for ninth place. Great to see the Bitech McLarens on the pace because they had a torrid weekend in Nagaro, but they're really in the fight here this weekend. And oh, there's going to be contact between the two McLarens as Giorgio Pantano gets really, really racy and forces his way past Daniel Lloyd. That'll be very, very interesting later on indeed as they come out onto the. Uh, bottom well, straight I'm, now. I'm delighted to see a motor race going on with those two McLarens, particularly with Giorgio Patano, who is a well-known racer. His time in GP2, one of the toughest competitors they've ever seen. 2008, he won the GP2 championship. He beat Bruno Senna, Lucas de Grassi, Roman Grosjean, and Pastor Maldonado on his way to winning. So a real top quality driver. He did Formula One with Jordan for a season in 2004, but that didn't go particularly well. Five and a half minutes to go, five and a half minutes left. Are we going to get a change for the lead? What I was about to uh, have a little meander about earlier was, is Book going to be super keen to get past? Is it because if he finishes second, he'll start front row for the main race later on. Is that better than, than ending up in a gravel it, it, Starting second is better than making a big lunge down the inside and the closing laps. Unless he's got a clear shot at getting the lead of this race, he'll take second place. That's intelligent driving close through Panacle Bend, who he's got momentum as they go on to what the 37th lap of this one hour event. So, Gap came across the line just again, three tenths of a second. I suspect how, uh, that Maximilian Book has decided I'm going to take second place, start in the front row of the grid, and we'll take our chances in the championship race later this afternoon. It's only three tenths of a second behind, though. It's all kicking off behind because um, Giorgio Pantano has now got his way past Stefan Racina. So Pantano is up into eighth position now and is on the back of the Velorba Corsa Ferrari in front of Andrea Montemini. So action packed throughout the field here as they head out towards the left hander. John Watson makes his way down to speak to the drivers after the race, but we've still got four and a half minutes of action still to come. And, well, Harry Project leading the way, only three tenths clear of Max Boot, but as we've just been saying, he may well decide that uh, discretion the better part of valor and to start in second place for the main race later on is preferable. And here's Cesar Ramos under a lot of pressure from Philippe Salaquada now. Up into seventh place, uh, up into uh, seventh place is Salaquada. Here's our top two across the line now. Prochik, the advantage is still three tenths of a second. And Harry Prochik actually has done a brilliant job. He's lapping, uh, well, that lap, he was the quickest man in the field. So any concerns that we had about Prochik's experience or his pace have all been put to rest. Pantano still on the attack as he comes into Paddock Hill Bend as we go on board with Maximilian Buch into Graham Hill. You can see hardly any steering input. There's your own Bleekermolen and Gottfried Grasser. He's the team boss with his thumbs up. Leading the race is his car in the hands of Harry Prochik. Through they flash that brilliant angle at Surtees. And now into Pilgrim's Drop and then up the steep hill again into Hawthorne. The camera angle makes makes it look so flat, but they're actually coming up towards the camera. It's just the fact that the camera's high up on the hill as well, that it looks so flat. And how many laps, how many more? We've still got a good two or three laps to go, I think, in this race. Two and a half minutes left on the clock. 
I think they'll be coming through to start their penultimate lap of the race this time around. But look at that, Max Buch is right up behind as they come down towards clearways. Is this the chance for the German to take the position off the Austrian? No. Not yet, I think he's just gonna try and force Harry Prochik into an error. We go on board with him as they come through Clark Curve. He's the closest he's ever been to the Lamborghini in front. Up into Paddock Hill Bend, still nothing doing. Prochik defends the inside line. But Prochik's missed the apex there. That could give Book an opportunity. Coming up into Druids, Prochik knows it, covers the inside. Might not have a lot of racing experience, Harry Prochik, although he did actually do seven races in Formula Koenig back in 1999 in the Red Bull Junior team. So he's certainly a talented racer. And at 38 years of age, he uh, may well have a, a slightly wiser head on his shoulders than Maximilian Buch, who despite his incredible talent and, and maturity is only 21. They come through Pilgrim's Drop again, up into Hawthorne. One minute and 20 seconds remaining. So this will be the penultimate lap of the race now. And the pace that these two have had has been very impressive. The quickest man of anyone on that last lap was actually Sergio Jimenez in the Brazil BMW, who's in third place. And it's been brilliant to see the Brazilian BMW team able to fight, but into clear ways we come again. That Lamborghini handling so well out there. I asked Max Buch this morning, can you win this race? He said, yeah, no problem. Our race pace is really good. As we move on to the final lap of this one hour sprint race here, this is the qualifying race. This will offer some points, but not a huge amount. It'll offer eight points for the winner, four points, uh, sorry, six points for second place. But the main purpose is to set up the grid for the main race later on today. For the final time, these drivers will head out into the woods. There you can see the differing lines that John and I were talking about earlier. The inside line, the tighter line being taken by Harry Prochik. Book leaves it out wide and then slingshots out of the corner. So the clock ticks to zero. And we're on the final lap of this qualifying race here at Brands Hatch. There's the man with the checkered flag. All ready. But who is going to see it? It looks as though Harry Prochik is going to take the qualifying race win here because he's edged the gap now to Maximilian Buk. And I think we'll see an absolutely delighted Austrian if he can take the checker flag in the lead of this one. No podium for this either. It's all about setting the grid. There's Max Goats getting ready to go to the pit wall. Jerome Bleekemola nervous, but he doesn't need to be nervous anymore. Through the final corner comes Harry Prochik. A brilliant drive from the Austrian. And Gottfried Grasser and his team are going to take victory in the qualifying race here at Brands Hatch. They will start on pole position for the race later on. Look at the delight in the Grasser Racing pit wall. A third and fourth place for BMW Team Brazil as well. Fifth place for Nicky Mermanov. Sixth place for the car that led the whole of the opening stint. Cesar Ramos and Laurence Van Thor. Seventh for the Villorba Corsa car of Philippe Salacuada and um, Andrea Montemini. Eighth place for Giorgio Pantano in the Bitec car. That's Bitec's best result of the season so far. There's Alex Zanardi across the line. Five laps down in the end after his excursion on the exit of uh, Clearways. Four laps down, my apologies. And there's the congratulations on the uh, HDP garage. Max Coates, very happy because he knows that it'll be a front row start for Max Buch later. And I think Max Buch will fancy his chances. Uh, we, we saw he had better pace than Harry Prochik because he was about a second behind and managed to reel that in. I think when it matters in the main race this afternoon, Buch will fancy his chances but I'm very excited to hear from Harry Prochik. Uh, uh, not, not a gentleman driver, but he certainly started off as an amateur in recent years after leaving the sport for a good 10 years or so at top line international level. And he takes everything. He's very laid back about his racing. He, uh, I've seen him before. The qualifying session has been about to start and he comes out of the motorhome seemingly unfazed. 
and it's going to be great to see him celebrate. He'll be down with uh, John Watson in a few moments' time. Sergio Jimenez and Cesar Ramos have been called to the race director. Here's the results after the qualifying race. This is how the main race grid will line up. Harry Prochik and your own Bleeker Molen will start on pole position after 40 laps of action here at Brands Hatch. Second place will be Maximilian Buch. Third for Sergio Jimenez and fourth for Mateus Stump. So those two will start side by side on the second row of the grid. Nicky Mermanov and Cesar Ramos will be in fifth and sixth places. Salaquada will start seventh. Giorgio Pantano then finishing in eighth place. And look how close that was from fifth place down to 11th place. Absolutely nose to tail. Vincent Abril and uh, Mateusz Lusowski will be a little disappointed, I think, to have a 12th place finish. And then we had our retirement, Stefan Ortelli. He only completed uh, one lap before coming into the pits after contact with the 6085 car, sorry, of uh, Steph Dusseldorp down there. And uh, Alex Zanardi, unfortunately, finishing four laps down after his excursion. But in fairness to Zanardi, he made for some frantic action. It was always going to be a great race up at the front, but the added safety car just bunched everyone together. Look at the, uh, the Grasser Racing Team bowing to Harry Prochik because whatever the case, brilliant drive from Jerome Bleekemode in the first in, but Prochik had to pull his weight and he did pull his weight. A phenomenal performance as they pull into the pits. And uh, I think Max Goetz, will, Max Goetz will be congratulating Prochik as well. There's Boot climbing out the car. A little, yeah, that was good enough. Second place. And those two have a little chat. They're not going to be overjoyed with the second place finish, but uh, as far as the championship is concerned, I think that's a job well done for the Mercedes pairing, especially after it looked like Goats had the lead going into Paddock Hill Bend. Of course, this is the first time the, the uh, co-drivers get to talk to each other. But we can now hear from Harry Prochik and Jerome Bleekemolen. Wonderful performance from them. They're with John. Jerome Bleekemolen, you must be very happy with the qualifying result. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's such a tight championship. So many good cars out there. And I had a really nice stint together with Lawrence and uh, the car behind. I forgot to... Uh, no, not the... Not the uh, another Audi, Marcus. And uh, they were chasing me hard and it was great. Then I gave over, we were leading, and then Harry finished the job. So fantastic. You I have to ask you, did you get lucky today with that safety car or not? Well, I mean, for sure we were, you know, we had a good inlap and uh, on the same, at the same time, the other guys backed off for the safety car, which they shouldn't have done because, you know, you should stay on it until you reach the line. So that's why we won it. So uh, we were a little bit lucky, but sometimes you got to take it. Well, Harry, Harry, your teammate, Harry Project. Come on, Harry, come on, have a quick question with us. Well done. You had a lot of pressure from Maximilian Book. What did you feel? Uh, yeah, nothing, I would say. I was only looking in the mirror. I see you can handle the speed. I was okay. And, uh, but uh, don't make mistake, I concentrate on that. Everything was fine. <laughs> Jerome made a, a, a great job. And uh, this race was, was the first really good laps for me here in Brands Hatch. And so I was a bit um, scary about that because in training I don't drive too much. Uh, now the speed is okay. And uh, now thinking for the main race. And Brands Hatch itself, pretty good to you? Brands Hatch is my dream. I know I was, I think, 12, 13 see the Formula Ford Festival, Ratzenberger won and so on. It was always a dream to, 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 to race here, to win here. Better than, you know what I mean. Congratulations, <laughs> guys. Well done. <laughs> Harry Project then talking about uh, Roland Ratzenberger, the fellow Austrian who won the Formula Ford Festival here in the past. There you can see the uh, Brazilian TV crews absolutely delighted with the performance of uh, Sergio Jimenez and Caca Bueno finishing in third place, and uh, as I think the Brazilians will be, and it's great to have such uh, coverage in Brazil. Now let's hear from Maxi Buch and Maxi Goats. There we jump. Maxi, you, you got the lead into the into Paddicle Bend, then you're nerfed by the Audi Lawrence Van Four. Yeah, for sure, I tried to, to overtake him on, on the start, but you know, on Brent's Hatch, you never know what's happened. It's a special corner, very dangerous, and I tried a bit to overtake him. I was just in front of him, and uh, I, maybe he did a little mistake, but he touched my, my uh, rear side, and then I come a little bit off, and I have to lift the, the throttle, so I must let two, three car pass, and then I was uh, on the fourth place till the pit stop, so um, yeah, it's always uh, something uh, crazy in the first corner here. It's good. Maximilian Book, you pushed very hard. At one point, we thought you might have got ahead of the Lamborghini, but Harry Project did a strong job. Yeah, for sure. Um, he was very fast in the sectors where I, well, where there are or the only opportunities to overtake. There he was uh, quite fast, and there was I was not able to overtake. And yeah, I'm a bit disappointed because I could could have gone a bit faster. But at the end, P2 after this 
start, what Maxi had was is still okay. And now the big points are coming up. But the good news is you're both starting in the front row of the grid. Well done. So there you can see Buch and Gotts not overawed by their second place finish, as you would expect. But nevertheless, it was a strong drive from them and shows the pace that they'll be looking to demonstrate later on. But now let's hear from the Brazilians a third place finish for them. Caca Bueno, tell us about your afternoon, or morning even, not an afternoon, how was that? It's a great, great morning. That's a, it's a, a very happy, a very happy because the, the cars have a, a, a very good pace. Uh, you make an intelligent race and Jimenez drive a lot in the, in the, in the last stint. We've, we're very, very proud of the team because after one difficult year, last year, we start uh, so well this year and we keep the, the job for better and better than the next times. Sergio, at one stage there were three Brazilian drivers racing each other. You came out on top of them. Yeah, it was very good. Uh, the car was, the pace was good in the beginning of the stint was not so good. But after the safety car, we were faster on the traction. And uh, that's why we, I couldn't pass, I could pass. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy because I have a very difficult year last year. And uh, this year, everything's going well. Our main thing is fight for the championship until the end of the year. Well, they brought the sun out, the temperature out. Have a good race later this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. So great news for those two drivers. And this is how the championship stands then. Maximilian Buch and Max Goetz picking up points for winning the qualifying race here. Stefan Ortelli still in the second position alongside Gregory Gilbert, but Ortelli uh, not racing with Gilbert this weekend. Kaká Bueno and Sergio Jimenez up into fourth place in the standings after that result, with Blika Molin and Procek up into fifth places. Vincent Abril and Mateusz Lisowski dropping down into sixth place, as do Afanasyev and Dusseldorp losing a couple of places. But the main points are up for grabs in the main race this afternoon. As far as the fans go, I'm sure they've had a, a very entertaining morning of racing and hopefully that's just whetted their appetite for more action later on. And as far as the team's classification goes, it's HDP Motorsport who are still on top of the standings ahead of BMW Team Brazil, tied on points now with WRT. So that's going to be uh, an interesting fight and WRT I think will have a lot of well, a post-mortem, really, into how that race went. Grasso Racing Team with that win are now up into fifth position in the team's classifications. So there are the cars down there. Pulled into Parc Fermé. No podium for the uh, qualifying race, as it's only the uh, qualifying race. Although I, I might be wrong because it looks like there is some action on the podium. So we'll, uh, we'll wait and see what transpires there. And everyone's gathered around the bottom. But uh, it's a... Out onto the podium then come Harry Project and your own Bleaker Molen. I think this is for the fans opposite the uh, grandstand. There's not usually a podium presentation after the qualifying race, but the fans deserve it. I think after that action-packed race... My apologies, there is a podium after the qualifying race this season. And onto the top step has come Gottfried Grasser with his drivers. And now we hear the Austrian national anthem. moment then for two of the three Austrians on the top step there. Harry Prochik, Austrian, Gottfried Grasser, Austrian, your own Bleeker Molen, the Dutch driver, will be delighted to be there. Jonathan Palmer, the managing director of uh, 
Motorsport Vision, who run the Brands Hatch circuit, is there handing out the trophies. The former Formula One driver, Nico De Silva from Blancpain, handing out the second place trophies. And Jonathan Palmer will hand the winners' trophies to our winners. Wonderful performance from Harry Prochik and your own Bleeker Molen to climb onto the top step after a hard fought race. And Hugo de Silva will present the winning team's trophy to Gottfried Grasser as well. And you can see the excitement for Grasser to take the trophy after a, a wonderful race. And they'll be hoping to perform something similar in the main race later on this afternoon, no doubt. As they now pose for the photographs, those will be the top three on the grid then. Bleeker Molen and Project will start on pole position later on and it'll be the drivers that just finished the race that will start the race this afternoon. So you can see no one really too keen on, uh, on the champagne action, are they? They'll just have a a little drink of it perhaps before the red one. No, actually that's a crazy idea, of course they won't. But they'll keep it for later on perhaps. They're certainly not gonna spray it now because they've got to spend the rest of a hot day in those overalls. And it'll be certainly hard work in the main race this afternoon because if we had 22 degrees air temperature when this race started at half past 10 local time, imagine what it'll be two or three o'clock this afternoon. And what a brilliant day these fans are in for here at Brands Hatch. The Main race this afternoon will get underway at 2.15. Well, our broadcast will get underway at 2.15 local time. The race getting underway at quarter two as we get ready for the uh, the Silver Cup podium. There you can see Fuminelli and Colombo, the winners of the Silver Cup, which is a, a competition within the overall classification. So they still get their points for finishing in their overall positions but then they also get points for finishing in the silver cup which is basically aimed at getting two young drivers together uh, two silver rated under 25 drivers and that's why you can see a lot of youngsters waiting out the back of the podium there there is as i said colombo and fuminelli behind them you can see matez lisovsky and uh, vincent abril And they will be heading out onto the podium in a few moments' time after a strong performance. But I think Gabriel and uh, Nazowski, after finishing on, the over, finishing on the overall podium in France, will be a little frustrated to, uh, to have not performed quite as strongly here. So out onto the podium come our winners, Stefano Colombo. And alongside him, David Fuminelli, Matthias Nazowski and Vincent Abril finishing in second place, and it's third place for Miguel Toril and Oman Ibrahim. And there are our top three then in the Silver Cup standings. A hard fought battle with Fuminelli and Colombo taking the win in the Silver Cup. So a beautiful morning at Brands Hatch, saw a beautiful GT race. It looked as though Max Coates had got the lead around the outside, but Van Thor went to deep. A little bit of contact between the pair of them. Racing incident, I think, has been decided, but that dropped Goats back a few places and allowed Jerome Bleekemolen up into second place. It all got very busy in the early stages. Sten Pentus lost the back end of the car coming out of Graham Hill Bend. And then Thomas Enger was on a power driving mission as he took positions left, right and centre. Here coming into the left-hander of Surtees. There was also Rene Rass going up the inside of Sergio Jimenez into Hawthorne Bend, but then Rass trying to get past the second Brazilian car had a little bit of contact that damaged the car for Rass, and he had to pit with troubles, and that sent him pretty much out of contention. Alex Zanardi had a spin at Clearways and unfortunately ended up beached in the gravel, which brought the safety car out. The uh, Mayor Melnoff Audi jumped the Ramos Audi at the pit stops, and then Max Buch was on a mission going around the outside of the race leader, uh, sorry, the second place driver at Paddock Hill Bend. The two BMW Brazil cars managed to force their way past. Then Nicky Mermanov went right wide and that moved Kaká Bueno and Sergio Jimenez into third position. The battles continued throughout, but up at the front, no one could stop Harry Prochik and your own Bleeker and They win the race, will start on pole position for the main race later on. We go on air at 2.15 local time. Make sure you join us.